Hello and welcome. You're watching Majato on Art. I'm your host Rudhima Shukla. Today's episode features two incredible exhibitions, each with a unique scale and theme, and also a very exciting auction review by Satbi. We will also meet the maker of mysterious artworks, artist Elal Shezia. This is Majato on Art. Raising awareness on environmental issues has become the need of the hour. Recently, this notion took a creative turn at an exhibition organized by Arts for All called Nature's Connect, which was inspired entirely from nature. Earth's degradation is reaching its threshold at the hands of man-made pollution. It turns out, art can play the role of a catalyst in starting dialogue and raise awareness on this issue. Along with raising awareness, the exhibition Nature Connect also offered a splendid opportunity for emerging and aspiring artists with no association to the mainstream art sphere of Delhi. Arts for All is now in its sixth year. We are in exhibition space, residencies, workshops, and basically we are into nurturing creativity. And uh, it's by the artists for the artist organization. And it's an interface between, uh, you know, the rural and the contemporary and we try and, uh, and also the residency is mostly for young artists from outside the city. Like Kishan, whose mesh cow is a symbol of fragility of nature. Filled with plastic, the cow represents the sad reality of our food chain. When I was leaving my house, I saw that I was eating in the starting of the cow, where the cow was eating the cow. So, when I got the idea, I thought that if the cow is eating the cow, then why don't you keep it properly? So, what is behind it? I wanted to understand this. So, when I started making this project, first of all, the shed of the cow is there. What is going on there? So, there are 2-300 cows. I saw that no one has no care for proper care. No one has no food for them, no one has no food. और जो गाय है पूरे दिन घूमती है कचड़ा या जो भी मिले उसे वो खा के वापस सेट पे ही आती है शाम को उसके बाद ये दूध निकाल के बेच देते हैं अगर ये कचड़ा खा रही है प्लास्टिक खा रही है या अच्छा खा ही नहीं रही है जो दो दूध इसका मिलेगा उसमें कोई भी प्रोटीन या न्यूट्रिशन कहाँ मिलेगा हमें तो इसीलिए हमारी बीमारियाँ भी बढ़ती जा रही है धीरे धीरे Artist Somu Desai brought together a unique installation made with cloth and tar, which is symbolic of a sadistic celebration of nature's death. My work is uh, who cares. Who cares is an expression where uh, I find that uh, we are quite helpless. We have a sensibility and we have a feeling of saving nature uh, regarding uh, being a responsible towards nature. But somehow uh, I feel really helpless. And I feel I am very much controlled. Controlled by the big business houses or the corporate or the commercial market. Because uh, whether we wish or we don't wish, we have to use plastics. And the question is that what if if I become a hardcore nature friendly person and if I try to avoid using such material, will I be able to match the needs of the time? So, so what happens slowly, slowly, the sensibility of nature, if we can't help, then we have, come on, who cares, use it. But that's not a good gesture. It's it's kind of you know a uh, feeling of uh, I can't help it. I can't help it really. So my work is more like a momming, momming of the the subconscious steps taken towards uh, disaster of nature. 
another crude illustration of nature's abasement can be found in Devika's installation. The work represents the, the detrimental impact of construction of development on the environment. So the donkey here, made of hay, which is a material used in rural India for construction. It's sustainable, it's environment friendly. So the donkey represents the ecosystem, nature, and it's carrying the heavy weight of this large building, which is all concrete, which is metal. It's a metaphor. So you're breaking the back of the environment. You're doing damage which is irreparable. Real issues expressed through paintings, posters, installations and sculptures inspired many a visitors and left the organizers proud. We don't want to be part of the rat race of galleries and we don't want to be running after those same uh, names. We say we empower artists but actually these artists have empowered us. Really, because a project like Nature Connect happened because of these young artists, the way, the zeal, with the zeal they have come up with artworks and with such fantastic artworks, I mean, uh, really, it's only these young artists who could have supported us. Sathbi recently organized a very exciting auction review for their upcoming auctions. Featuring 24 distinguished paintings, the auction review offered a rare opportunity to see artworks by some of the most prominent creators of South Asian art. Yamini, thank you for being here. We're here today with Yamini Mehta, Director of Sotheby's South Asian and Indian Contemporary Art. I um, wanted to ask you a couple of questions about your upcoming auction. Um, tell us about some of the major pieces. Starting with the Howard Hodgkin sale, uh, Deluxe Taylor by Bhupen Kakar. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it really is uh, a work that kind of cements the friendship between these two major artists. That work is something that I think should hopefully go into a museum mm -hmm. or institutional collection. We have this work called Gesture that is, you know, one of these experimentations with when Thayab Mehta moved from the diagonal into his sort of more mature series. And it's just a very evocative work in, you know, these sort of bold color planes. And yes, it is unusual to see Anjit Bawa on the front cover of a catalog. So we're excited about that too. Do you think that maybe that is saying something about the current art market? It's no longer just Souza, Hussein, Raza. Um, how is that evolving? The Indian art market is shouldn't be five or seven artists at the top and everybody else. We're, we're starting to see that there are people who want a wider collection or more of a survey that shows Indian art in all of its diversities. How do we make this a less intimidating environment for young collectors? Well, I, I'll give you an example. I had the chance to go visit the Kochi Biennale. I happened to visit on a Sunday when there were lots of just local Kerala families seeing it as art art entertainment in a way. And that's something that I think serendipity also has that potential to do in Goa, um, you know, in, in last year and this year as well. What would you like to see happen further, ideally? I, ideally, I would love to see, you know, Indian art become collected far more internationally. I'd love to see a work from here featured in a place like the Met right. or um, the Tate. Now th this is a time of discovery mm -hmm. and, and a time to sort of realign for a lot of curators and, and look at themes other than just surveys of Indian contemporary okay. art. We're here with Gaurav Bhatia, Managing Director of Sotheby's India. Gaurav, thank you for joining us. So. Tell us a little bit about how you've seen the market develop over, let's say, the last 10, 15 years. Well, Sotheby's uh, has, has really invested in India, and I think it's an important market for Sotheby's. 
Um, the total sales that have come out uh, of Indian clients alone at Sotheby's auction has been um, upwards of 250 million US dollars. Uh, the client base is increasing 13% year on year. Uh, but what's really encouraging, Akash, is that we're seeing a, a new demographic of collectors mm. that are coming in who are younger. Um, and I think that's just democratizing the space a little more. How is social media reinventing um, the emerging collectors and how even the established collectors can have access to the market? It's an interesting question. Um, we're seeing a new demographic coming in to the Sotheby's space, right. which is 18 to 35 years right. old. And as we know, they're always on their phones, they're always on social media, and catering to them via Instagram or our Sotheby's app um, is very, very critical. And the access is immediate and, um, and beautiful. We are quite quickly approaching a timeline where many of the major progressives will also become heritage artists under the um, exportation laws of India and will no longer be able to be sold abroad. How do you think you're going to um, deal with that and perhaps also how do you think the government might deal with that? Well, I think it's an interesting question. I think it is important to preserve um, the art that does exist uh, within your uh, country. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's a wonderful thing to have these national treasures with us. Uh, but there is also, luckily, um, uh, been a wonderful, wonderful osmosis of this art that is abroad. So there are right. a large number of works that actually exist. How would you, or I should say, how would you um, describe to an emerging collector who is still a bit intimidated by this market, um, how would you tell them to get involved? Well, I think it's a very important question, especially for India and an emerging right. set of collectors that are curious but also confused. I think the most important thing to tell them is that art really enriches your life. It makes living so much more beautiful, so much more engaging. To buy contemporary art is to engage in a dialogue that is of today, mm. of your socio-political socio environment. Um, art is the ultimate luxury.